Okay, I've got my entire piece of fabric smocked. And if you look at my stitching, you can see how there's rows of stitching. I've done all eight rows. I've got it all smocked together. Looks like a pretty big mess from the back. But if I flip it over, then you can see the front. And it looks really cool. Now the next step is I'm going to take my two edges that don't have my stitching on it. Remember how we had to do this stitching on two of our edges? I want to take my other two edges with right sides together and I'm actually going to sew all along this side. So we're going to line these edges up, pin them as best we can. It's kind of hard, it's all gathered. Pin this and stitch all the way down this long side, leaving my end with these other stitches open. I just finished stitching this whole side. I used a half inch seam allowance and it can be kind of hard to get it flat because of the gathering. So if you end up with a few little puckers and tucks, don't worry about it, it'll be okay. So I have a tube now. I'm gonna flip it right side out. And now I'm gonna start to stuff it. I wanna stuff the middle part because these ends are gonna fold over like this. So I want to stuff the middle, and you're just going to use some polyfill, some batting. I have some that's left over from a quilt I made that I that was flat, and I ripped it up and kind of made it fluffy again. So we're going to get that all stuffed, and if you can, you push some down to one end, kind of get it down to one end, and then you're going to take these stitches that we stitched earlier and use those like a drawstring to pull the end shut. And you kind of want to get it to lay kind of flat. You don't want it to like pucker up like this. You want to keep it kind of loose so that they lay flatter. I don't know if you can see that. So pull it tight, but try to keep it down. So kind of tuck them in, pull that tight, and then you're going to tie that shut. It's a little bit easier to get it to lay right when you've got some stuffing in there. So put a little bit of stuffing in, tie that one end shut so that it looks like that. And now I can finish stuffing it and I can push it a little tighter on that end. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stuff it all the way up to the this end, leaving this open so I can fold it over. Okay, I've got my entire pillow stuffed, as you can see. I've got my drawstrings on this end. I'm going to pull this end tight. And if you need to add a little to make it full all the way out, because you don't want to stop the stuffing right there. You can actually take it out a little bit. you got to kind of play with it and see how much you need. I'm going to draw these tight. You know what, I just realized I need to put this one a little bit closer. It's pretty... I guess it'll be okay. Never mind. Never mind. Alright, pull these tight. And I like to tie them both at the same time. I've got a hold of both of them. I'm going to just loop them around each other. Sometimes if you come to be the same length, they're easier to handle. Around and in. And it slipped. Okay. I'm going to have to tip this up to do this. And sometimes if your first one isn't very tight, don't worry about it. that's okay. It's a good starting knot to kind of hold it, and then you can kind of get tighter from there. And we're going to want to, once again, kind of push it in so it's not standing up. I still don't have it very tight. I'm really all thumbs today. Try to get this a little bit tighter. All right. What's the problem here? Okay, my ends are in nice and tight, both of them. If you're having trouble getting it tight, get your stitches close together and even maybe overlap them and that will help. Our next step is to run 
four threads from one end all the way through to the other end. So we need a piece of string that's more than twice as long as my bolster. So you want to be able to go down and back and then have some extra to work with. And I'm going to want to go straight across my opening. So I'm going to put one in there and then come across to the other side and go down. For some reason there's a knot in my thread. Okay. So now I have a string going across the middle and, a, and then I should have two tails that should go all the way through. And I want to do that one more time. Cut another piece of string and put a line this way. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but I have basically a fat or a string X across the top right here, two threads going across, and then my tails coming off of those are super long, long enough to go all the way through, and I have taped my tails to a long, pointy, smooth object. I happen to find this um, knitting needle in my bin of junk, and I couldn't find the match for it, so it's not very useful. So I took the end off the cap, so now I have a long, pointy object. And my goal is to stick this through the middle and pull my threads through. Now you think it would go right through that poly stuffing, but it doesn't. You have to work at it. So I will be back later when I manage to get this through there. Okay, I have done it. I got my strings all the way through to the other side. And now I can pull that and kind of dimple it, which it looks a little bit better. Now this step isn't completely necessary. If if you're having trouble getting it through there and you can't improvise anything long and skinny, don't worry about it. Just skip it. It's okay. It's funny, the original, the old pattern I have says to do this, but it doesn't give you any clue how. It just says run a thread from one side to the other. And it's like, seriously, uh, magic here? Okay, so what we need to do next is now, of course, we need to anchor these to this side. So just thread them all one at a time and put one at the north point, one at the south point, one at east, one at west, just kind of stagger them out north, south, east, west, and then you're gonna tie them to each other. You'll have to figure out which two go together. That's pretty easy. If you pull on it hard enough, the other end moves, so. Anyway, tie them together, pull your ends in, and see I got these two now. And I can push it down and I can tie these two together. Dropped it. So I've got a little dimple here, a little dimple there. Now, of course, I'll do that with the other two that I haven't already tied. I'm going to stick them through the fabric at some point and tie them together. After we do that, then we just have to um, put two buttons on the end. So let's talk about that briefly. You could buy a button that you thought was pretty, that you liked. Um, I'm actually going to cover a button. Uh, the button to cover kits are quite pricey, so I just went out and bought some really big black buttons that I am going to use. I'm going to cover them myself. I'm just going to take my button. Of course, it left the big metal thingy in the middle. And I'm going to basically cover it with fabric. I'll get that metal thing off, don't worry. So I want to cut a circle of fabric that comes in around, but I have a little bit of extra there. And I'm going to gather this and pull it around there. And in order to gather it, you're going to make what's basically called a yo-yo in sewing terms. And you're going to want to take some thread, and you're going to want to do a running stitch all the way around. Where's my needle? Okay. Needle and thread. We'll do the running stitch, which is just up, down, up, down, like this, all the way around. Alright, stopping where I started. I didn't knot my thread because I'm going to pull these and tie them together. So, what I would do is I would put this in here. I would pull it really tight and tie it, and there you go. 
you just covered a button. Inexpensive, cheap, easy. If you want it more squishy, you could put some a little scrap of batting on there. And then, of course, you would tie these together. But first, I got to get that little metal thingy off of there. That's bothering me. So I need to take care of that. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, we are almost done. I've got all my um, my four threads through and secured. Dimples in place. I've got my button covered. Of course, I have to do one more. I did add a little bit of a quilt batting in there just to give it a little poof. Now we have to put this on the end. And we're done. Voila! Now, the one I made before this, I sewed this on here, which it was really a pain to try to get under there and sew it on there. So I'm actually think I'm going to glue this one on. And we'll see. If it doesn't survive my kids' pillow fights and rambunctiousness, I might, um, I'll have to come back and sew it on. But I think I'm just going to try gluing it for now. I'm going to use some um, fabric glue and just glue that on there. I hope... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I don't know if you just saw that, but I took the lid off the glue and it exploded. So i got to clean up the okay. mess. The good news is... The glue went all over me and the table and didn't get on my fabric. So let's try that again. Opening the glue, this time making sure there's none at the top, ready to burst out. I'm just going to put some on here. And there we go. We are all done. Except I got to do the other end. Thank you for joining me for this Busy Bee project. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to smock a bolster. Have a great day.